I noticed that in this budget, the environmental protection operation uh, increases a little over 20 percent, and that includes an initiative for 15 new Bureau of Air Quality staff. Um, what's the purpose of this initiative, the additional resources for this particular um, fund? Is that to address new issues or current issues, or what? Could, could you give me a little? It seems like a pretty uh, hefty increase, and I understand. Sure you know, that some of that little over a million is for new staff and maybe why those 15 positions are needed. Sure. No, thank you. And and uh, just for, for clarification, you'll see some increases in some of those budget line items in the general fund, which is essentially a, a, a undoing of the special fund transfer uh, piece that was included in last year's budget. So about 11, 11, so, little over 11 million that yeah. comes back over, I think, from the stewardship fund and recycling fund. Is correct. that correct? Correct. Yeah. The, 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 again, don't have those numbers directly in front of me, but it's it's uh, something on the order of that. Uh, within air quality, it's it's um, uh, uh, really to address some some current issues. So uh, one, um, uh, just at a, a, the broadest possible level, we've had a 25% decrease uh, in the amount of staff within uh, uh, the clean air program. In addition to the 15 positions, um, we're also moving, we, we also have a fee package that's that's been through the Environmental Quality Board um, uh, uh, to, again, keep us level funded and, and deal with some deficiencies that have been identified by, by EPA, federal EPA. Uh, the specific things that, that uh, we run into, one is on the permitting side, uh, just, just ability to get through air quality permits, which uh, as you can imagine, particularly for Title V uh, and, and some of the larger permits uh, can be very challenging. And then two, to support that, uh, we end up in this program, probably more more than any other, doing a lot of modeling and monitoring, uh, which which is an intense uh, takes some intensive work, uh, and there's frankly been more demand for both additional monitoring and additional constituents to be modeled. So monitored rather. So uh, it entails all of that. And I, I'd like to go down that path of, of more demand a little bit, so you can help Certainly. help me understand the EPA. Um, has said that CO2 emissions from electric power generation have decreased about 27 percent nationwide since 2005, which is really the beginning of when uh, we started to transition more towards natural gas. Uh, but in Pennsylvania, it's decreased in that same time almost 40 percent. So obviously, we're making positive strides in Pennsylvania in our air quality direction. Would you agree? Certainly, yeah. And, and uh, you know, I've said this in some of the other hearings. Um, we've seen improvement in air quality, and that's not just in the context of CO2, but in our criteria of pollutants. <coughs> uh, but for climate in particular, it's a matter of pace as well. Um, you know, that, that uh, we're looking to be more aggressive on that. The other thing I'd point out in that reduction is it isn't all control. It's also this plant shut down has been supplanted by this plant. So less emissions coming out of that plant, but we still have permitting oversight, all of the other responsibilities that come with that that aren't dependent on the amount of emissions. Because we're seeing improvement there, uh, also <coughs> improvement in the uh, methane levels, which has decreased 12 percent since 2005. And the EPA credits this achievement, and I'm quoting the EPA here, as largely due to decreases in emissions from distribution, transmission, and storage of natural gas. So I guess my, my overall question is, according to the EPA, it seems as though our production of natural gas and more transitioning to natural gas has certainly been a benefit not only to our economy but also to our environment. Certainly. And, and as I said, you know, a lot of that has been at the expense of, for example, our older coal plants. Uh, we saw our first uh, uh, zero CO2 source with Three Mile Island recently uh, supplanted by those natural gas plants. Uh, I'll also point out on the, you know, uh, w one of the interesting things in terms of our total CO2 numbers is traditionally uh, power sector has been at the top of that list. It's now second. Industrial, which includes natural gas production and, and uh, amongst other things, is now the number one source of, of CO2 uh, under our emissions inventory. 
I'm, I'm glad we're seeing air quality improve. And again, I'm looking at that at that budget number, and the the new staff is being maybe slightly higher than than what we need. But my time has uh, expired, and I'll turn it back to the chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Sure, I, I, and I, and I think the the one thing I'd say, and we see this in a number of areas where uh, we still have, um, even as the emissions come down, we still have the permit responsibility, we still have the inspection responsibility, the reports that come in, the maintenance and monitoring and review of continuous emission monitoring from these sites. So the, the fact that emissions come down, it's not, there's not some uh, uh, linear correlation to the amount of staff or the amount of work that it takes uh, to, to achieve those, those benefits.